For the first time, Ukrainian fighters fired two Atoms missiles at the military training ground where soldiers of the occupying Russian army were trained in the Zaporizhia region. As a result, a large number of people died at the training ground where there were dozens of soldiers. It is reported that this is at least the sixth time in the last eight months that Russian troops have gathered in the open air to conduct exercises. The number of personnel losses is not specified, but the Forbes publication notes in its article that they could be catastrophic. It should be noted that the attack with Atoms missiles is carried out by means of HIMARS rocket volley. So far, the invaders' training grounds have been repeatedly hit by MLRS missiles through this system. Kremlin leader Vladimir Putin's hopes for a relatively easy victory in the war against Ukraine hinge on Republican Donald Trump winning the U.S. presidential election. Until then, Russia remains willing to suffer losses that make no operational or strategic sense. This was stated by retired American Colonel John Nagel, who is now a professor of combat operations at the U.S. Army War College. In a commentary to the Wall Street Journal, he pointed to Trump's promises that if he gets another presidential term, he will seek a quick peace agreement between Kiev and Moscow, although Putin has made it clear that he wants Ukraine to capitulate. Ukraine continues to inflict losses on Russia that would be unbearable in any country that is not an absolute autocracy. Nagel stressed. The Wall Street Journal reported on the difficulties Ukraine is experiencing as it enters its third year of full-scale Russian invasion, especially ahead of a potentially dark winter. The occupation forces continue their relentless advance despite heavy losses, while Western leaders seek a strategy to end the war. Arms supplies from partners are limited and slow. President Joe Biden and other Western leaders have repeatedly said they want Ukraine to win, but they are not providing enough support to stop Russia and turn the tide Ukrainian officials and soldiers say, the journalists wrote. However, the aggressor country is also facing difficulties. Moscow's forces have not achieved a significant breakthrough despite their enormous efforts. According to US analysts, September 2024 was the deadliest month for the occupiers. Western intelligence says that Russia's losses that month amounted to approximately 1,200 killed and wounded every day. The Wall Street Journal, citing opinion polls, stated that the number of Ukrainians who are ready for negotiations is gradually increasing, but this does not mean that they are ready for concessions, the publication emphasized. According to an August poll by the Democratic Initiatives Foundation, less than one in ten citizens would be willing to give up some territory to Moscow to end the war. Ukrainian servicemen and drone pilot Oleksandr Solonko, who is fighting on the Eastern Front, said any peace deal, other than one achieved by defeating the Russians on the battlefield, would only freeze the conflict for a short time, allowing the enemy to rearm. They will attack again, and this will continue until our country disappears from the world map. The warrior explained his position. In Donbass, Russian invaders are seizing villages of 10 houses where no one has lived for 15 years. This was stated by retired Major Alexei Getman, a veteran of the Russian-Ukrainian war, on air of Radio NV. Getman spoke about the situation in the Donetsk region and the most threatening areas of military action. In particular, the goal of the Russian invaders is to capture Pokrovsk. The enemy has come very close to the city. According to various estimates, the occupiers are 7 to 10 kilometers from Pokrovsk. Then it was stopped and there was no further direct advancement towards the city of Pokrovsk. There were battles, variable successes, positions changed. By and large, there was no advancement, Getman said. According to him, the enemy tried to encircle Pokrovsk from the flanks. From the north, this is the Toretskoy direction, and from the south, Kurakor. He was especially active in the Kurakor direction. Firstly, to straighten the front line because the Pokrovsk salient for the Russians turned out to be such that one could expect Ukrainian attacks from the flank and then cut off the group, which then came almost right up to the city of Pokrovsk, noted Getman. 
At the same time, he commented on the information published by Bild about the capture of many settlements in the Selidovo region by Russians. Personally, I and many of my acquaintances during the full-scale war were in those places in Luhansk and Donetsk regions, and there were such small settlements that did not even have a sign. There are three, four or ten houses there. Perhaps no one has lived in them and has not lived in these settlements for a long time, but legally they exist. And when we talk about military actions and say that the enemy managed to capture or we liberated settlements, then it seems that this is a large number of cities and some serious actions, noted Getman. At the same time, according to him, it happens that these settlements consist of five houses in which no one has lived for 15 years. Every day in the news that three to four settlements have been captured. You know, the front section there is several dozen and the area there is not that big and there are settlements there. It seems dozens or hundreds. Once again, not the overwhelming majority, but a large number of these settlements exist, not in fact, but legally. They are registered on the map. There has been no one there for a long time, said Getman.